and welcome back as I keep ghost riding the whip on this campaign in Perfidious Beat plays XCOM War of the Chosen. Really feel like there's really no one behind the wheel on this one. I'm not uh, I'm not driving anymore. I'm just letting this baby glide while I pump some sick beats and do the Dougie standing in the open window. It's probably really only a matter of time before I roll over a speed bump, trip and fall out of said window, then run over my own foot and break it and lie on the ground in agony and helplessly watch while my car rolls into oncoming traffic and causes like a 12 car pile up. Well, admittedly, it is my first time ghost riding the whip. I tend to be a little bit more responsible of a driver than to try and let my vehicle coast while I dance in the open window. That's what this campaign feels like, though. There's there's nobody behind the wheel anymore. Well, I mean, John Bradford technically is behind the wheel, but he's behind the wheel of the Avenger, and he may as well be ghost riding the whip. I mean, if we're letting Bradford drive, that may be more dangerous than ghost riding the whip. Sure, 12 car pileup, but at least one of the cars of the 12 is empty because it's the one that we fell out of and rolled over our foot in. Well, it's 12 car pile up had I remained in my place behind the wheel. Yes, we probably could have avoided it, Mr. Warlock. But also, is that countless casualties? Because 12 cars, even if they're all eight passenger vehicles, that's still only like 96 people that got killed. But you got to take eight out of that because, as we said, one of those vehicles was empty. So it's, it's definitely countable. Is our end of the month mission? Nope. In fact, we have to go do... Archon, Elite Shield Barry, Elite Purifier, Elite Officer Heavy Max. So we've got seven enemies and what I'm going to assume then is probably a Chosen or possibly the Viper King again. Chance for us to pick up Yukiko Yamamoto Engineer. All right, we'll go do this mission. I have to assume our team is going to be a complete and 100% total trash fire because everybody is either hurt or injured from our last mission. Ghost ride the whip there. Hey, you know, speaking of ghost riding the whip on an airplane, do you think that's what that guy at SeaTac Airport was doing? Do you think he was just like, hey, I'm a ghost. He's, he was going for the ultimate ghost ride. It's like, I'm going to ghost ride a plane. And then he got out there on the wing in a plane. He was like, this is not what I expected at all. It's very windy here. Difficult to hang on to this wing. Planes going much faster than they look like they're going from the ground. And then he smashed into that island. You know, if you are going to ghost ride the whip, though, he did get at least one part of that right, and that he stole the whip. I feel like if you're going to ghost ride the whip, you should definitely steal it. That's the best way to go for the ghost ride. Let's give you an advanced scope, an advanced auto loader, and an advanced hair trigger, because the scope, since you're one of our lowest ranked characters, will help you hit stuff. Get old fingers out there, get him to work. Beardo, you're going to wind up tired at the end of this mission, but there's really not much else we can do about that. I think the rest of your gear is probably acceptable. Shane Wolf has got our med kit, which is fine. This means we need Taylor knock around Guy Reese here to do something. First off, let's get him a more effective weapon. Let's give you our execution weapon, and then we'll throw you a mimic beacon too. I get... We shouldn't need more than one Mimic Beacon, considering the fact there are only seven people on this mission that aren't a Chosen or a uh, Alien Ruler. Granted, the Chosen can summon other people. I think all of our Chosen have a summon ability. One summons robots, one summons, I want to say, Advent, off, like Advent Troopers, I think, maybe. One of them has General, and one of them makes robots. I think he's already all sorted out. And that just leaves old Groot down here needing a little bit better gun. We took Groot out with an unmodified weapon last time because I'm bad at XCOM. We won't make that mistake again. And now we're ready to work. For certain values of work, I guess. We got to rescue an engineer, which means we're going to get the mission where we don't start with concealment, probably. So we won't get an opportunity to ambush really anything. At seven guys, there's definitely either Chosen or Ruler on this mission. There would be more than seven. That's... It's probably still three pods. I bet it's a pod of... Two pods of two, one pod of three, and then Chosen. I would much prefer it was a pod of three and four, but four-man pods are very, very few and far between. We just got word from Actually, 
No, never mind. Next com two, I guess you don't really get four man pods ever. It's twos and threes. Yeah, yeah. Operation Foolish Apollo. Driving his sun chariot. You think Apollo ever ghost rode the whip on the chariot that was the sun? You think he ever ghost rode the whip on the sun? Maybe that's how the Sahara Desert happened, is Apollo was ghost riding the whip, flew that bad boy a little too close to the planet and scorched it. So we gotta bust this dude out of the clink and take him to the exit point, which is not particularly conveniently located vis-a-vis -vis the prison. Oh, never mind, we have concealment. So this, okay, this is a jailbreak. I thought this was the escort mission. You should really read the mission descriptions, Pete. Why? We've played every mission so many times now, it doesn't matter anymore. They are on patrol. So one pod of three, that was an Archon, what appeared to be a shield bearer, and I believe a purifier was tagging along for funsies. So let's get you up here. We've got plenty of time. Let's take a nice we can we can afford to slow play this one a little bit. I don't know if we should make a confident approach. I'm not as confident in my approach, especially if I'm approaching a member of the opposite gender at like a bar or a club or something like that. I'm I'm the opposite of a confident approach. They say overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. It turns out that uh, underconfidence also a slow and insidious killer. It's just, you know, one of those things kills you and the other one kills your romantic life. Underconfidence, likewise, slow and insidious. It is actually slow and insidious. Advancing quickly. What has vision cones over here? Oh, it's just a bunch of civilians. We don't care about those. And we can see that Archon, which means we know the extent of the vision radius of everybody that's up here. We have no qualms then about getting as close as possible before we decide to pop this concealment. So we'll just stick you behind this tree. Finale, we're just going to put you on Overwatch. And Beardo, BFG, Overwatch for you two as well. We'd like to get this mission. Let's like, we want to go in and out quick on this one. Get it done. So we have enemies there and there. Well, we cannot hit all of them with one grenade. And Calder Hunter, if we are going to go for the grenade, should not be the man to throw it. Fingers, you actually seem like a much better... I just wanted to make sure I was throwing in the right tile. You seem like a much better man for the job. We're going to drop this here. That will hit both of those units and also do some falling damage when it drops it through the floor. It's going to make a plop, plop, fizz, fizz, oh, what a relief it is kind of sound. There you go. We We're revealed. Come get some. Archon's going to come at us and walk right into a storm of shit. Shield breaker and purifier should not really be too much of a problem for us. So how do we want to handle the open and fire? Well, where's our man with uh, the advanced repeater? Right here. Calder Hunter, I should like you to take the can't miss shots at this Archon and either one, do some damage or like hopefully maybe just straight up execute him perhaps. You're zeroed in so you get a better chance to critical, still no chance to miss. Outstanding with the execution. We really need to get repeaters on every single one of our weapons. A 39% chance to hit this man. You know what? That is unacceptably low. Go ahead and bust this purifier open with a grenade and get rid of some of that cover. We want to kill the purifier while he is still far away. So Binky, go ahead and take the kill. There we go. Hopefully that explosion... Aw, oh man, I was gambling on the fact that that explosion would be enough to bring the remainder of that wall down, and it was not. Well, 66% chance to hit. Not fantastic, but... Good enough to get the job done, and I think we drilled through his cover, too. We did, in fact, do that. You know, we use typically different syntactical structures on that one. You don't want to say they live no more. Why don't you just say he's dead? Or I killed him. You don't you don't have to go. I mean, you're not Yoda. You don't have to go for the, the dramatic reversal. You don't have to, you don't have to try and punch up your own dialogue. I await their approach. Oh, there's the chosen. Warlock then? Oh, it's the hunter. What's up, man? It's been a while since we've seen you. 
right on schedule? I mean, it's been a long time since we've seen you. I don't think you're allowed to show up late and then say it's right on schedule. So, Bewildered, you take bonus damage if we hit you three times on the same turn. You take increased damage from Templars, which we don't have. You're immune to explosions, which sucks. You summon... It's Stun Lancers, okay? You summon Stun Lancers, you enter Overwatch on ending your turn, and you do not trigger Overwatch or Reaction Fire. I wonder how that interplays with Interrupt. Like, if we use the Interrupt ability, how will that... How will that factor in? We need to get to their location to take them out. Okay. I mean, we, we kind of don't. We actually need to get to his location to break him out of prison, but we can take the Chosen out from wherever he happens to be. Thinking about doing, like, a slow advance here. Is there a doorway in this building? Yeah. We'll take this one a little bit slow. Mostly because we've got some people who are down bullets, and we'd like to give them an opportunity to reload. Did manage to parkour there. Eh, just double move here. If you've got bullets in your gun, there's no real drawback to going for the double move. And Overwatch isn't going to do us... It's going to do us basically zero good with regard to the Chosen, because he's immune to Overwatch. Like, doesn't trigger it. BFG, you got some move left in you. Let's hop you through this window. Put you on Overwatch. Yeah, it's a hospital bed, Dr. Tigan. Thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule to comment upon that fact. Let's see if the Chosen's gonna come closer to us, or what his whole... what his MO on this one's gonna be. It doesn't seem like he's trying to close in. The Hunter is one of the... he's the Chosen who's like the least aggressive. The Warlock tends to be very... kind of late... I don't want to say laid back. It sort of seems like the wrong kind of term. But they're the most uh, lackadaisical in their strategy. They tend to just like sit back and kind of make you do the work. They fight the way Perfidious Pete loves, and that they just be like, no, I'm just gonna sit back and let you do the work. They're lazy combatants, much like I'm a lazy lover. Actually, reload here. Getting Overwatch out of you. Uh, we wasted a free reload. Eh, well, not the first time we've done something stupid. So we know there's an officer and whatnot back there, puppy guarding the hunter. I really don't want to have to engage the hunter and another different pod simultaneously. It's looking like we're not going to have a choice, though, because, again, lazy lover back there is not... He ain't going to come help us out any. Any windows in this dump? Doesn't look like it. To that, position. that doesn't look like something you'd use to help someone, does it? I don't know. I mean... It's a good thing they're both dudes here, otherwise they'd have uh, violation of the YouTube terms of service. I love how that always becomes a thing in video games now. It's like whenever there's... Everybody's all about, oh, you know, it's like equal representation in media, more women in media, blah, blah, blah stuff. But whenever there's anything that even remotely involves potential nudity in a PG setting, like a television show or something like that, if there's going to be somebody shirtless, that somebody is going to be a dude. And I have a problem with that, and here's the thing. I'm I'm a big proponent of the equality thing, and I want to see more women running around topless. Not just because I like looking at boobs, although I do like that, but I was thinking about this earlier today when I watched my shirtless neighbor mowing his lawn. I was uh I was thinking, you know, if if my choices in this scenario for having a watch my shirtless neighbor mow his lawn, if I could choose between watching him do it or perhaps maybe a shirtless lady mow their lawn i i'm actually more okay with the shirtless lady mowing her lawn that's all i'm saying I mean, it makes me uncomfortable people are like it's okay for dudes to be shirtless in public it's really not that's an equality thing it should be equally okay if, if it's if it's okay for a dude to be shirtless in public it's okay for a lady to be shirtless in public and if it's not okay for a lady to be shirtless in public it's not okay for that dude to be shirtless and mowing his yard either and if I have to choose here, like if I'm adjudicating the law on this one, I'm going to go ahead and say it's it's not okay, actually. It, it's not okay for that shirtless man to be mowing that lawn. He is now bewildered. I don't understand specifically what bewildered does. Does it just take you, make you take extra damage? Like, why are we hitting you for nine suddenly? Or you're just going to be straight up killed. Nice work, by the way, Chosen Hunter. You just ran into the room and then got slaughtered. 
perfidious Pete level of competence right there. I'm gonna go back to talking about the shirtless. I mean, no shirtlessness. I think I've said my piece. It's not okay for my neighbor to be mowing his yard shirtless. That's what I'm getting at. Put a fucking shirt on. Doesn't matter that you're a dude. Nobody wants to see you shirtless, especially if you're like all sweaty and whatnot. Just like don't don't do that. We also got some kind of hack bonus. I'm not really sure which one that was, and that may be the first successful hack we've pulled on the campaign here. Just gonna bring you around the corner. I'll, actually, we should probably just go out this back door. Huh? Yamamoto, we're gonna bring you over here and have you hunkered down. The rest of the team has largely expended their turn. Beardo, you can just reload. There are no exterior windows here, so we got nothing to fear in that regard. And there's a maximum of what? Four enemies left on the map? Moving far. Just hunker down. Beardo, I guess you used a free reload, eh? Alright. Yes, Commander. Let's see if these guys will walk in on us. Shirtless mowing our lawn. No, but that's a really terrible spot for reinforcements to be coming, though. Yeah, I don't like it. I'm kind of thinking maybe we just ignore it. Like, can, can everybody make it to the exit? What about you, Yamamoto? Can you get there? You can. Well, I mean, you're def You're just like, if you can make it, you should go. Because there's no other reason for you to hang around. I don't feel like it's worth our time to stay here and keep fighting. What are we going to do? Rack up a bunch of kills we don't need? We do know there's a pod out behind the building, so we should be a little careful with our pathing. Taylor Reese can't make it. Can he grapple closer? Yeah, he can. So as long as we have grapples available, we should be able to just... We're, we're going full uh, Sir Mix-a-Lot on this one. We're going to hit and quit it. No need to stay and play. It's fine. We can be long, strong, and down to get the friction on. And I can, uh, I don't know, maybe hop on Amazon and see if I can find some like discount t-shirts so that I can give one to my neighbor and be like, Hey, you know, next time you mow your lawn... I leave the field. Throw the shirt on. Pete, I thought you said your neighbor never mowed his lawn. This is actually a different neighbor. So, the other guy, he, he doesn't really mow his lawn, shirtless or otherwise. Honestly, that guy, if he would just mow his lawn, I'd, I'd tolerate the shirtlessness. But, like, you know what? If you demand to be shirtless and in order, as recompense for your shirtlessness, you will mow your lawn, I'll, I'll allow it, actually. You can go ahead and go ahead and do that. I just really want you to mow. Let's get out of here. We actually parkour. That's useful. You're going to go last because I think you're likely to spawn a pod as you exit. Everybody else, I want them gone. In the event that you do spawn a pod, we should like you to have as much opportunity to vacate the premises. We want you doing it with like a minimum of interference. Alternatively, you know what? Can you... Why risk activating the pod when we could just grapple you to here? Don't misclick the grapple mode. We'll just grapple you to the rooftop, and then you can definitely make it with, like, no fear of being spotted. We can just stealth this shit. I love buildings without windows. Perfidious Pete's greatest ally, a windowless building, and a chosen who decides to run inside of it with no idea of what he's doing or where the enemy is. Nice flawless mission. More importantly, the mission was over quick, which should keep our downtime to a minimum. Pete, it's hot outside. Your neighbor's entitled to take his shirt off if he wants to mow. I'm not really sure the shirtlessness helps with the cooling, though. I mean, the sun is beating down on your bare skin that way. Maybe you should put on, like, a nice, cool layer of clothing. You don't see Bedouins running around in the Sahara shirtless. Even though Apollo is ghost riding the whip right over their head and scorching the earth beneath their feet. They're still wearing clothes. We still have much to learn. If we wish to destroy them permanently. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and take Wrath. And you know what? Well, I was going to say I'm going to take Zeroed in, but you have very few bonus ability points, and also you're a garbage fire of a trooper. So I'm not really going to worry about it, actually. I'm not wasting those points on you. We picked up Yukiko Yamamoto, who is, I think, an engineer. 
an Illyrium core, which is also useful. Yeah, another bonus engineer. She's helping out, chipping in with that alien debris. That's very nice of you. I appreciate your effort. There you go. Welcome to XCOM. And as is our paradigm, here's your shovel. And as is my paradigm, I'm checking out of the episode because this one's done. If you enjoyed it, feel free to drop a like down in the comment section. Support really does mean a lot. If you'd like to watch me continue to ghost ride this whip right in oncoming traffic, you might consider subscribing as well. New episodes of XCOM every the single aliens day. have always been monsters. Uh-huh. the very beginning, it was one failed science experiment after another. Have they ever tried ghost riding the whip, though, John? The advent forces, they tried to disguise no. it. But you want to hurry up and wrap this up? All that armor. Taking your air sweet-ass time. Now it comes to this entire facility dedicated to wiping I'm just gonna out. go thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again soon we're just gonna let Bradford continue this drunken ramble off camera thanks for watching